Now, what is going on everyone? Today we are going to start with Docker Compose. And some of you like might ask, ah, well, but why did we put like this Docker file in the first, first place? Because I thought we only want to test. Uh, yes, partly true, um, because we want to cover all the use cases that you might have like with Docker. So that means I want to be able to run a standalone container. I want to be able to start the entire application with uh, like the database and the web app itself. And I also want to test against a real database. So these are like these three scenarios. And while it might seem that at first the Docker Compose that we are now doing, while it might seem that this is only to just start the application with one command, um, we are actually going to use this Docker Compose later on to uh, test our application against the real database. So it basically all builds on top of each other. So just have a little bit of patience, uh, and, but we're going to get to it. Um, cool. But maybe just to reiterate, like what is the purpose of Docker Compose? Just to recap. Uh, so we already covered what a container is, like a container bundles an application along with its dependencies in a standalone thing, which is called a container. And this provides like isolation. And uh, this is kind of cool. But what happens if you have more than one container? Then it kind of gets hard to manage, right? Or what happens if I want to have five of these, for example? Well, then a tool like Docker Compose is super uh, handy. And as the name already suggests, it's Docker and Compose. So it composes like multiple containers. So it's basically a way to say, okay, I want to have three, four containers, maybe even more. And you can describe on how they depend on each other and which container should be launched first. So it just helps you to, to have like a more, if you have a more complicated setup. And um, this is like the goal, what we'll have in this video, to make our application work with Docker Compose. And they have like a really nice documentation. If you head over to docs.docker.com slash compose, um, then like it explains pretty much everything. But um, the gist of it is basic, basically um, you have like some file, which is called a Docker Compose file. And this thing is a YAML file. And in there you define like the services or the containers that you want to start. And then you run Docker Compose up and then it's going to do it for you. And this is what we are going to do right now. So in this application, uh, make sure that you stop your uh, container. Um, Maybe one more thing, let's put this back to localhost first before we do anything. And I'm going to make a new file and I'm going to call this docker-compose.yaml. Okay, and here you see now it's kind of like this pink whale. So VS Code already kind of knows what we want to do. And the first thing that you have in a Docker Compose file is you have the um, version of Compose itself. So of course this also develops and you know some features are only available from certain uh, Docker Compose file versions, so to say. And uh, 3.8 is like the latest, at least as of this recording. Okay, and then the way this works is you can say I want to have, or I want to define services. And now the question is, what do we want to define? We actually need two things. So we need a Postgres service, which is going to be our database. And uh, we're going to describe in a second on how this works. And then we are going to say, okay, the other service that we want to have um, is the app, which is like our web server, so our express uh, server. And maybe let's start like with the app, just simply because it's just uh, quite easy. So we can just say build dot. So what this means is it says, in order to build this service, um, please use the Docker file of the current directory, which would be this one. So basically this Docker compose thing is going to do the exact same thing that we did before, uh, but it's going to do it automatically. And then what else do we need? We can say, okay, uh, we want to expose some ports so we want port 8080 of our host machine uh, to be mapped to port 8080 of our uh, Docker container. Because remember, a Docker container itself is a kind of isolated thing. 
And in order to be able to talk to a Docker container from the outside, you need to expose it. And what we're basically saying is, we're saying port 8080 of our Docker container should be mapped or published um, to port 8080 of my host machine. So the computer you're currently running on. Um, and then apart from that, what else do we have? We also have a few environment variables that we want to specify. And this is actually where it gets interesting. So um, I'm just going to check like the configuration file that we have over here. And if we scroll down to the database, uh, then you can see that we can configure like our uh, database or like where it's trying to reach out to the database um, in various ways. Uh, we can for one use like these JSON files or like this file, or we can use environment variables. And this is pretty much what we are going to use is, uh, here. So we have like a database host, we have a database name, and we have a database user and a database port. So these are the things that we want to use. So uh, let's just keep that in mind and let's go back. And let's say, and this is like our custom application. So these are like environment variables that we basically made up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I want you to connect to a database called test node with Docker. Um, I want you to use the following database user. I'm just going to call this production coder. So please also call it a uh, production coder or you can call it whatever you want. Um, so we are going to make sure in a second that this user also exists. And uh, then we also say, okay, and the database port on which we are attempt like where the database is running is byte 5432 and this of course has to be the same as in the postgres service above here but we will get uh, to that in a second and that's like one more thing um, we need to specify the database host and uh, as you have seen by now like kind of docker is like a little bit uh, picky with hosts so as soon as you want to connect to another container um, you need to use the container name or like the service name instead of localhost. Because again, remember, this is like its own container. And if you do localhost, it's going to try to connect to itself, which is not what we want. We want it to connect to another container and or to another service. And this service is going to be this service here above. Um, so Docker Compose, it's going to... Um, basically spin up these two things. And what I say here is I want to connect um, this to uh, this. And then another thing that we can do is we can say depends on uh, Postgres. And what this means is it says this server here is depending on the Postgres database. Because if we were to start this app before the Postgres database, and we would attempt to connect to our database server, it would just not work because it's not up yet. And that's why I say, okay, this thing depends like on uh, Postgres and what Docker Compose is going to do is it's going to start this container first and then afterwards it's going to start this one. Cool. So that's it pretty much for our app. So as you can see, all we did was uh, we just overrode like uh, the configuration that we have. And now the question is, how do we create a Postgres instance on the fly? And the answer is actually pretty simple because there is a uh, Postgres image, uh, like an official, officially maintained uh, Postgres image. And uh, yeah, here you find the documentation and it has like a lot of information, um, but basically like how to extend this image. But basically what we can see from here is that this thing has like a few environment variables like a Postgres user, Postgres password, and so on. And there are also like a few examples like initialization scripts and database configurations and these type of things. But the main thing to understand here is that if we go to tags, we can see, okay, there's like an image and it's called uh, Postgres 13. So this is exactly what we are going to use. So instead of using like a Docker file, like here we said, please use the Docker file in the current directory. What I'm doing here is I'm just going to say, okay, please use the following image, Postgres 13. 
And what Docker Compose is then going to do is it's going to pull like this image from Docker Compose. And I'm just going to give the container like a name. I'm going to name it uh, Postgres as well. And then I'm going to specify a few environment variables. And that one is actually important um, because if you if we go back like to this description, um, what it basically says, I mean, you can read all of this, but uh, the summary is basically that if you specify a Postgres user in the environment variables, then it's going to automatically create like a Postgres uh, user with the value you just specified. And if you specify like Postgres DB, it's going to create like a database automatically for you when you start the container, which is super handy and which is exactly what we want. So if we go back to our code, we can just say, okay, I want a Postgres uh, user and I want this thing to be production coder. And this has to be the same like in here, because remember in our code, we are trying to connect to the database and we say, uh, hey, please use this user. So these two, they must match. And uh, then I'm going to say Postgres uh, database, which is also like one predefined uh, value. And this is supposed to be this one, right? So all we need to make sure is that these two or that these things here match. And another thing that we can do, which is super handy, there is something called, yes, Postgres uh, auth method. And what this basically says is, it says, hey, there's like different ways on how you can authenticate and uh, MD5 password hashes and all these kind of details. But basically what we can say is, if we set, if we set this to trust, then uh, Postgres is going to allow any uh, connection like from the outside world uh, without the password. Like that's what it says here. It's not recommended to use trust because it allows anyone to connect without a password, even though even if one is set with Postgres password. And this is actually what we want to do, because if we just use Docker Compose to run this thing locally, which is our intention, uh, then we don't care about like passwords and these kind of things. Of course, if you were to use like Docker Compose in production, uh, then you would actually care, of course. But I'm just going to take this thing and I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to say um, Postgres host auth method, method trust. Yeah. So that's it pretty much. I think, yeah, that should do the trick. Um, and the only thing that is now left to do is we need to take care of ports and we need to take care of creating tables. But since we're already over 10 minutes, I would just say let's do this in the next video. So again, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Uh, also, if you have a question, uh, please leave me a comment. You can also reach out to me on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Production Coder. And I've also created an email list. Uh, I've put the link in the description down below. So if you guys want to have a say in what we cover next on this channel, you can sign up there. And every once in a while, I'm going to send an email along. So again, guys, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.